taking to the skies over Gothenburg, this is no ordinary plane. It's battery powered. Right now, it's the only electric model certified to fly. All right, so this is it. Yes, welcome on board. But as you can see, there's only room for two. Can swing in. Well, it's still a compact little space. <laughs> What's it feel like to go up in the air in this plane? This is absolutely great. It's the nicest aircraft I've been flying. It's a little bit quieter than, than other aircrafts. And how long can you stay up in the, in the sky in, in a plane like this? You, you can actually be up in the air by one hour, approximately. You have to have 10 minutes reserve when you land if you're at the same airport. And if you fly to a different airport, you need to, by regulations, have 30 minutes in reserve. <laughs> Aviation is really polluting and makes up 3% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. The problem is, air travel is only set to grow. And if you want to keep flying, we need to find ways to lower emissions. A fuel or a propulsion technology needs to have a relatively high energy density. It's a challenge for, for competing uh, uh, potentially more sustainable technologies. The main limitations of complete full battery electric aircraft is related to the energy density and then they get too, too, too big to carry around and there's this sort of this challenge of, of making that technology work. Globally there are now hundreds of projects working to develop cleaner aircraft and many are testing out electric propulsion. Among the startups expected to soon take flight is Hart Aerospace here in Gothenburg. And this prototype that I'm being shown is fully electric. So this is the Hart X1, which is our first development aircraft. How many passengers can potentially be seated? Right, so this is a 30-seater aircraft. This one here has about two tons of batteries in it. As you can see, it's quite big in scale. And if all goes to plan, this will be the largest plane of its kind to fly battery powered. Engine testing has been underway. And this spring, the aircraft will be doing its first test flights in the United States. Backed by big airlines like United and Air Canada, it's one of the electric passenger planes that's closest to takeoff. So you can see the charge port here. It's carrying some very powerful batteries on board. So how long does it take to charge up? A typical charge will be about 30 minutes. But staying airborne with bulky, heavy batteries is a serious challenge. So they've come up with a third way, going hybrid. By the end of the decade, they hope to be transporting passengers in a plane that will fly with both batteries and backup fuel. The production aircraft, the ES-30, will have two electric motors and two conventional turbines. And so the advantage of that is you don't need as much batteries. For a normal route, it would be all electric from takeoff to landing. But if you want to go a longer distance or if there's a diversion, you can switch over to the turbines. All electric, this will fly about 200 kilometers from takeoff to landing. And then with the hybrid technology, it can fly up to 800 kilometers. For safety, electric planes must have plenty of power in reserve, and carrying fuel is lighter than extra batteries. But which fuel is used in the backup engines and how clean it is will be up to the airline. What sort of routes will this operate on? Some of the places that our customers are most excited to deploy at first include flying between islands or in mountainous regions where the geography is challenging, places where your population density is maybe a little bit lower. Despite advances, electric flight is only really suited to short hops. Batteries are still far too heavy for long haul, so that needs a different solution. New lower emission fuels are being explored, as well as hydrogen, which is zero carbon. But that means totally rethinking how planes are designed. And that's going to take quite some time. How important a stepping stone is hybrid flights you know, towards getting greener aviation? This is a really challenging thing to do. So electrifying aviation, removing the carbon from aviation, first small planes like this, short distances, and then getting to longer and longer distances and larger planes. We're also going to see new technologies for their really long distance flights. For shorter trips though, 
perhaps we're only a few years away from plugging in and taking off.